when I first went in, when I did this show, it was I, I had no idea of the ramifications that it would eventually have. It was just another job, as far as I was concerned. But I loved the script, and I learned the lines on the airplane from New York to L.A. And uh, I arrived there, and they said, well, what does a Klingon look like? And I said, well, I don't know. You guys tell me what a Klingon looks like. And they said, I don't know. Do you have any ideas? And I said, well, I think since the script is what it is, let's make him a futuristic Genghis Khan, a predator, a warrior. I was amazed, absolutely flabbergasted, because I was the mystery guest, as it were. I hadn't been announced on the program before that. And I was there to, in a sense, MC the show and introduce all my old friends uh, who are very well known, like, you know, Scotty and Uhura and, uh, and Chekhov and all the rest of them. But when I came out, I thought, nobody's going to remember me at all, because like, I only, as I say, did one episode. But it seems that that episode, which was one of the best, I think, uh, the script itself was, was absolutely fabulous, because in a sense it was the United States and Russia carried, projected into the future. Uh, it's also the basic premise of, of Star Wars, you know, the, the evil empire. And being a personification of the evil empire, that seems to have registered very strongly with absolutely everybody. I was flabbergasted, I must admit, by the reception that I got. You know, it's thrilling to think that after 25 years and spanning two generations so far, the Gene Roddenberry's vision still strikes such a responsive chord in the hearts and minds of so many people. I've always thought that science fiction writers are really the true prophets of the universe, of the future. Yesterday's science fiction becomes increasingly tomorrow's science fact. Now what about the next 25 years? Hopefully we're going to see the dawning of a new century where hopefully a real enterprise, a starship, will boldly go where no man has dared to go before. The Star Trek fans. Uh, well, I've met a great many of them. Uh, they, um, they vary, you know, shapes, sizes, uh, intensity, ages, everything like that. But I think that there's a kind of common denominator. Uh, most of them are of the younger generation. Uh, when I say younger generation, I'm speaking from uh, an ancient age, as you can <laughs> well see. But uh, it's quite fascinating that this whole generation now, and uh, I suspect the ones to come, uh, are fascinated by the stars. This is the new adventure of the, of the coming century, as far as I can see. Because um, if you look very closely at, at, at the past, you see that what was science fiction at one point in time is, is rapidly becoming science fact. And uh, I was just watching a show the other night about Hyland Rickover and, and the atomic nautilus which harks right back and named for uh, Jules Verne's Captain Nemo's Nautilus. And that has finished the exploration of this planet, really. They found a, an underground passageway beneath the North Pole. There's nothing left to explore uh, on Earth. Uh, now with the, the beginnings of the, of the Hubble telescope uh, vision, uh, where we can see billions of light years away into galaxies far, far away, uh, I think that the younger people and the Trekkies are in the vanguard, as certainly Gene Roddenberry was when, when uh, Star Trek was fantasy, and uh, is now becoming, as I said earlier, more and more fact, that th this is where the future lies. Uh, the, the entire mythology of the past of mankind, of God and heaven and earth, and there being a heaven up there and a hell down below, is completely destroyed, because we know that in every direction 
It expands and expands and expands, and it's arrogant of man to think that we are the only creatures in galaxies that we haven't even begun to explore yet. Uh, so I think that the, the, to answer your question, or to try to answer your question about what do I think about the Star Trek fans, I think these are the people who are probably going to be future scientists who are serious about the exploration of space. And in a sense, Roddenberry was a sort of visionary because he, he wrote fiction fantasy, which is rapidly becoming fact. And I think this is the fascination and is probably one of the reasons that this has, it's no longer a cult following, I don't think. It's becoming almost a universal following that this show has got. I think the ridiculing of the fans, perhaps <laughs> some, some people go to extraordinary excesses and it becomes a, a comic book adventure. But on the other hand, uh, that's a very small fraction of the people who are very seriously interested in space exploration. And I don't ridicule them at all. And I think the ones who do ridicule them are um, the small, limited minds uh, who are responsible for the status quo and the idiotic tribal warfare, for instance, is going on all around the world at the moment right now. Uh, nonsensicalities. It's, it's as though they're on a treadmill and we're just repeating past generations' follies and going absolutely nowhere. Whereas these people, I have great respect for them and I've been to many conventions and I've spoken at a lot of them and uh, I, I've also met people from every walk of life. For instance, I was uh, in Los Angeles just recently doing a play and I was at a hotel where busloads would come in from Europe, from Belgium, from France, from England, from a everywhere in the world. And people would stop well, I sat <laughs> at the bar in the lobby and say, it's him, it's him. I must have had a thousand photographs taken uh, with, with people who didn't speak English, but who are a new generation who are seeing the reruns. I mean, I was only in one episode, let's face it, one episode called Errand of Mercy. I was to have been in, in a couple others, um, but unfortunately I was busy because Coor was going to become the, uh, a sort of running character. Uh, but he didn't um, because I was just not available and they dropped it and went on to other things. But it's amazing that a whole new generation, for instance, seeing only reruns, not only of Star Trek, but Battlestar Galactica, uh, have discovered what was done 20 odd years ago. And to them it's fresh and new. And it just means that Gene and uh, Glenn Larson were I won't say light years, but they were a generation ahead of their day. When he died, uh, of course, I wasn't around when he died. I just got the news, which saddened me tremendously because he died too young, really. Uh, I only had a chance to meet him about three or four times. A marvelous man uh, who had forsaken his ordinary job. I think he was a, I don't know, was a highway patrolman or something, or a sheriff's department or something of that ilk. Uh, but he had a vision of peace. Uh, an extraordinary vision of peace uh, amongst everybody, all through, all through the planet and beyond the planet to the stars. And uh, it's unfortunate that all scripts, uh, which he didn't particularly uh, want to have happen, but does happen because it's commercial television, let's face it, and the concept of having a protagonist and an antagonist seems to be firmly embedded in the minds of old producers and scriptwriters. Uh, that there is no drama unless there's a killer and there's a, a hero, the black hats and the white hats and all that kind of nonsense. But uh, what I think Gene wanted to do was to literally, as he says, go where no man has gone before, explore new worlds, explore, not destroy, but just find out, grow in knowledge and mind and spiritual power. That's the kind of vision I think the man had. We're talking about a television program, but. Uh, pop culture has become the culture of today. Um, and I think that is the first step. It's, all, it's in its infancy, really. Um, but I think that they're crying out for superheroes, whether it's in the comic books or in television. Or they're crying out for uh, a way of life that is not just a treadmill rat race that goes on and on. Is, is that all there is to life? Uh, working for a bank from nine to five every single day or working a dreary job and then suddenly you wake up one morning, you're old and you're dead because you go in an arc like that from babyhood to 
death, and you've achieved nothing. You may amass a, a lot of possessions, make a lot of money, but you don't get the answer as to, what am I on the planet for? Why am I here? What's it all about, Alfie? Hope you all have a wonderful time today. Keep the faith. Yeah.